Few people realize that the formula to calculate valve authority for two port control valves is different to the formula to calculate three port control valves. This is important because it means that the methodology that you use to actually size a two port control valve is different to the methodology that you'd use to size a three port control valve. However, everybody is using the three port method to size two port control valves, which doesn't work. So in today's video, we're gonna briefly, as quickly as we can, run through the differences between the valve authority method for two ports and three ports, and hopefully I'll give you a bit of an idea about how you can consider that when you're sizing your valves. Now in today's video, we're gonna reference a few little drawings, and these drawings are credited to SIBZ Guard H, Building Control Systems, if you are a BMS professional, you really should have one of these. These are excellent. It's an excellent manual. There's a lot of information in here on valve sizing and, and all sorts of other things. So these schematics are credited to SIBZ Guide H. And there's a few notes in the description around the website to SIBZ where you can find out more about this and get your own copy if you're interested. I would highly recommend it. Now we will start with the valve authority calculation for three port control valves. So this is how we sized control valves in the 80s and 90s when we didn't have two port valves and we either didn't have variable speed drives or they're too expensive. And it says over here that N, which is valve authority, equals P1 divided by P1 plus P2. P1 is the pressure drop across the fully open control valve and P2 is the pressure drop across the coil. Now the great thing is that we have all that information. We have the flow rate of the coil and we have the pressure drop across the coil. So in the olden days, it was very easy to size three port valves. All the variables that were needed in the equation was provided to us. So we generally used to try and match the pressure drop across the fully open valve with the pressure drop across the coil. So if we had 10 kPa across our coil, we'd try and size the valve and select a kV as close as possible to 10 k. PA across the valve, and then we have 10 divided by 10 plus 10. So that would be 10 divided by 20, and that gave us a valve authority of 0 0.5, which is ideally what we we're aiming for, um, or slightly higher, but definitely not lower. If you get down to about 0 0.25 valve authority, the valve won't work. Um, and there's a whole bunch of things there that we're not going to go through today. So that was really easy. Um, but then we come across to two port control valves. Now, if you go and Google two port control valves on the internet around valve authority, you always get this very simple circuit where they have a pump and they have the load, which is a cooling coil or a heating coil, and we have the two port control valve. Now, basically, in simple terms, the to calculate valve authority for a two port system, it's not the pressure drop across the control valve relative to the pressure drop across the coil. That's what we have for three port valves. But in two port valves, the formula is actually the pressure drop across the two port valve divided by the pressure drop of the rest of the circuit. And how it's normally described is they say that it's the, the pressure drop across the valve divided by the pressure if the valve was fully shut. And that's often described as the pump head. So if we had an example on the internet, you'd normally find if this is a 100 kPa pump, they would show an example of 50 kPa control valve. So it'd be 50 divided by the 100 gives you the valve authority of 0.5. That would be a great selection. The issue is that in real life, we never have this scenario. So, and I've often seen it before where people are sizing valves and they're trying to do it the right way and they're using the pump head. So they're using their the valve pressure drops divided by say 200 kPa or 300 kPa, the pump discharge pressure. And that's completely wrong because although this is correct in theory for an example, in real life, this local circuit over here, it's nowhere near the pump. You know, it's in another plant room somewhere else. It's four floors down across the floor to where the VAB reheats are. So fortunately in this version also has another little drawing which gives you a better representation of what this looks like. Um, so here we have a boiler, we have a pump with a discharge pressure of 100 kPa, and then we have four equally sized, let's say, air handling units. 
And if you look here, we have 45 kPa minus 35 kPa. So we have 10 kPa across each one of these valves. And we have 25 minus 15, so we have 10 kPa across each of the coils. So if we were sizing this job, and we had the flow rates and pressure drops of those coils, and there was 10 kPa across the coil, we'd simply try and match those control valves to be the same as the coil. And that's why in this example, we actually have 10 kPa across all these valves. So on a spreadsheet, this would look like a perfectly sized example. The 10 kPa across the valves are matched with the 10 kPa across the coil. So in the actual three-port method of sizing valves, the way we're doing it, usually the wrong way, it would be 10 divided by 10 plus 10, which would give us a, um, a 0.5 valve authority. The issue is that that's not how you size valves with two ports. And the, the problem gets worse as you move towards the plant room where the pump is. But we can see that the system pressure is increasing as we move up. So on this example over here, we have the 10 kPa and the 10 kPa, but the rest of the circuit, which in my opinion, how I'm reading it, is this 80 kPa over here. So if we size this valve the way we currently do it, we'd be going 10 divided by 10 plus 10, 0.5 valve authority. But actually what's happening and how we should be doing it and what happens in real life, it's 10 divided by 80. Let's give my calculator 10 divided by 80 equals 0 0.125. Now keep in mind that at around 0 0.25, it's not gonna work. Um, and next week, we'll do a little video on the relationship between the equal percentage curve of the, the valve and how that is affected by valve authority. Very important, but we'll sort of bleed into that next week. So we can see here, if you sort of think about this for a while, this sort of proves to us that our current method of using the three port method for sizing valves, it doesn't work in real life. So in, a, in around about 2005, when I first started working this out, um, I started to, in my valve authority formula, was to try and add in some extra resistance to my equation. But the problem is that we don't know what the circuit pressure is. We don't know what the local circuit pressure is, you know, 15, 20, 30 meters away from the plant room, down two floors, loads of pipe bends, all sorts of other AHU, we don't know that. So I started saying, look, I'm gonna divide my 10 kPa, I'll divide it by 10 plus 10, plus I used to allow seven kPa for the commissioning set, and I used to allow three kPa for pipe bends. Now, I was trying to do this to try and get slightly closer to what's reasonable, but in actual fact, that's still an estimation and still not right, because depending on how far you are from the plant room or really how close you are to the plant room, it just gets worse and worse. So I'm not saying that you guys should go away now and start sizing valves differently. You need to follow the methodology of your company. But I want you to think about the fact that what you're doing is actually wrong and understand this when you're sizing valves. An important thing to realize is that a valve sizing spreadsheet where we have flow rates and pressure drops and KVs and valve part numbers and actuator part numbers, that spreadsheet doesn't size valves. It's a tool to help you think about sizing the valve. So for example, you put the flow rate and the pressure drop of the coil in, the spreadsheet formula calculates the KV of the coil. Then in that column is a little drop down menu. It helps you choose the range of KVs available for the valves that your company uses or supplies. Uh, you select the right KV, and the next column is a form that helps you calculate the pressure drop across the valve from the KV and the flow rates. Once you've done that, it then selects the right valve part number, it selects the right actuator part number, close off pressure, leakage, you know, whatever else, two port, three port, um, any sort of um, extra auxiliary parts you might need, little couplings and things, but a spreadsheet, a valve sizing spreadsheet does not size valves for you. It's always concerning when people think that they can plug in flow rates and pressure drops and match pressures and that just makes it all work. It doesn't. You have to think about these things. Think about what is the pipe size at the coil? What is the pipe size of the valve? How far away from plant room? There's a lot of things to think about. A lot of things we obviously can't go into in this little video now. And an example of a mistake I always see 
is when you have really small coils like VAV reheats or um, small fan coil units, these coils have very small pressure drops, say, you know, 2 kPa. And I'll look at a spreadsheet and I'll just see that we've got the, the coil pressure drops 2 kPa and the control valves, the KVs have been selected for 2 kPa across the fully open control valve. So, you know, 2 kPa, 2 kPa, they're matched. It's supposed to be a good valve authority. But considering what we've just gone through now, that's really bad because the rest of the circuit, there's going to be a commissioning set there, wound right down. There's going to be pipe bends. Like the, the circuit pressure could be 20 or 30 kPa and, you, and you've sized a valve for 5 kPa. It's definitely not going to work. So I always, one of my rules of thumb is that I will size valves by matching as best I can and considering things, but I will never ever size a valve to have a pressure drop it across it of less than 10 kPa. So that's my minimum 10. So if I size a valve and it's like, you know, four or five kPa, because the coil's small, I will just raise it up to 10 kPa as a minimum. Um, but that's just my opinion, the experience that I have. Um, that's not a scientific fact. It's not written down anywhere. I'm not saying go and use that methodology. And I'm certainly not saying, you know, go and drop all your KVs by two to now create to create higher pressure drops to counteract this problem. I'm just saying, please think about these things because valve sizing is super complicated. Now, if you guys learned something in this video, it's a bit of a different video. This I've told you something, it's interesting. It's not gonna help you size valves because there is no answer. But if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you're up for it, leave a comment below.